It's finally here. The Loop Deck CT officially works with Capture One. In case you're unfamiliar with this, this is the Loop Deck CT. It stands for Creative Tool. And basically this is a modular input device that changes its ability depending on what application you're in. It works for both Macs, which I'm on right now, or PCs. As you can see, I'm in Google Chrome right here. If I hit the Twitter button, it's going to open up Twitter. If I wanted to use Siri, I could hit this button right here. This is a volume knob here. I can change the brightness of my screen right here. You get the idea. But all I have to do is click over to another application like Premiere, for example, and then I can cycle through these number buttons here to see so many different options. And if I click over to Photoshop, again, the CT will change. Now, up until this point, the Loop Deck CT did not officially work with Capture One out of the box. You had to do some finagling and customization to get it to work, but now with the new update, it does. All you have to do is head over to Loop Deck's website, update it to 5.0 or beyond, and you can jump right into Capture One. Make sure you go to Edit and Advanced Keyboard Shortcuts, and then set this up here to Loop Deck Default, and everything should work perfectly from there. Now, as you guys know, my buddy Patrick just got married, and uh, right before he left Puerto Rico to get married, he said, Lee, can you do a quick engagement session with me and Kristen and our new dog, Gibson? And I said, sure. So we went to Old San Juan, and we did a little mini session so what I'm going to be doing is a quick call and edit on this entire session today. Now, Loop Deck makes things very easy. And as you're getting through the editing process, you're gonna move through one, two, three, four. And as you can see on number one here, we have everything that we need to call this session. That's the first thing that I do whenever I get home with a new photo shoot. I wanna go through every image. I wanna delete the bad ones out so that I only edit the best looking images. Now, using this main control dial here, I can cycle through each one of the images. If I click this zoom in, zoom out, you can see here I can scroll through all of the different thumbnails. And what I want to do is go through each image one by one and give them a star rating. All right, so I rated everything that I like three stars. Now I can hit the filter three star button here. So I've now narrowed this down to 15 images and I'm ready to start editing. All I have to do is hit number two here. As you can see, all of our options change. And for the most part, when you're doing global edits, you're going to be using these knobs along the outside. We have temperature, exposure, contrast, highs, shadows, and structure. I think what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna raise the exposure a little bit, but then lower our highs boost the contrast just a little bit. Add a little bit more in the shadows. And there's just a little bit of structure. Now, as you can see, I have three shots here that were all taken in the exact same location. If I like the way this looks, I can simply copy this and then I can click on these and click apply to apply what we've just done to these shots. Now, these shots are gonna be a little bit more difficult because as you can see here, they're kind of coming in and out of shadows, so we're probably going to have to edit these a little bit differently. I feel like this shot looks nice as it is. I'm gonna to try to save some of those highlights in the background there. Maybe warm it up just a little bit. I feel like that looks pretty good. I'm going to copy this just so you guys can see and then paste it onto this next one, and I think it's going to be a little bit dark. So what we're gonna do on this one is just boost the exposure here and then again, recover some of these highlights a little bit more. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the cars on the right here. I can click the crop button, and if our horizon was messed up, I can rotate this here to uh, change our horizon, but I think everything looks pretty straight. I think I just need to crop in a little bit. And I can click return right here. I think that looks much better. Once again, with this shot, they're really backlit here. I think I'm gonna have to boost the exposure again, lower those highs to recover those highs, I think that's looking really good. I'm also getting kind of some weird white balance on them because they're so backlit. For the shot here, let's try black and white. I'm just going to click number three here and you can see convert to black and white. And then it gives us these options down the side to change the luminosity of these different channels here. So as you can see, this is just changing uh, something in the background. And then I can click back over to number two and I can really start messing with the shadows and the contrast again here. I 
I feel like that looks pretty cool. If I want to, again, I can copy this and then I can paste it onto our next shot here. Let's see once again if we can crop this in, make it a little bit more interesting. Something like that looks good. Once again here, a little backlit shot. I'm just gonna boost our exposure and then recover those highlights. I did not have any light on this shoot. Everything had to be natural light, so uh, when that's the case, I usually like putting the light behind my subject. That looks great. Looking a little closer on this one, it looks like Kristen's eyes are closed. So I'm gonna rate this, get it out of there. These are pretty similar. All right, I think this is the best looking shot. So I'm just gonna crop this in a little bit. I feel like we're a little far. All right, so we are all done. So that wraps up this edit. Obviously incredibly simple, but this is how I have always edited my weddings, engagements, portraits. There's no need to spend 20 minutes on every individual image when you're taking hundreds or thousands of images in the case of some weddings. Now, of course, I've only scratched the surface with what Capture One can actually do, but that can also be said for the Loop Deck CT. Everything that you've seen today can 100% be completely customized to the way that you personally edit. If you're the type of photographer or videographer who loves optimizing your workflow and learning about all the shortcuts, and you are interested in putting in the time to customize something like this, you will absolutely love the Loop Deck CT.